Greetings, family. One thing that I will say is that my guitar strap always gets stuck on my guitar stand. And there's always these little, little things, you know, I think that are always calling for my attention in life. And they're only there to uh, bring me back to uh, that, like, reminder to be patient and slow and present with what is happening. Anyways, I would like to extend a warm welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for bringing your energy and your attention to share with me today. It means the absolute world. I would like to introduce who I am. If you don't know who I am, my name is Rob Taylor. And I am the, the heart behind Rob Taylor and the rewritten story, which is a project I started two years ago with my sweetheart, Jamie Freeze. And I'd like to explain a little bit about the rewritten story and, and what that means to me and where the name came from. As everybody is, I was born into a story, a narrative that was given to me by my family's story, by my ancestral story, by the cultural story that we live in, you know. And so when I was young, I was born in Florida. My dad was addicted to crack cocaine. There, my, he was also an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic. They come from very dysfunctional families as well. And one of my earliest memories is we had to leave Florida uh, to move to Wisconsin. And when we got to Wisconsin, we stayed with my uncle and my aunt for a little while until we got our own place. We got our own place there. And some of my earliest memories are just my mom and my dad fighting uh, really bad, arguing until one day the cops came and they took me, my younger brother who was three, my older sister who was six and I was five. They took us to foster care where we went from family to family until we finally found a stable family where I was then molested by my foster brother and I was told that if I would tell anybody that I would be hurt and my family would be hurt. So that was like my first maybe instance uh, where I really remember shame. And then we were given back to my parents who had quit drinking and they found sobriety. I was very much so excited to be back with them. And my mother had a lot of anger problems. She had a lot of unresolved grief in her that was expressing itself as rage and that would come out at just the, the drop of the dime. And, and sometimes my sister and I and my brother were the objects of this rage so I remember being having my head slammed against the table. I remember getting a hubcap thrown at me. And I just remember this, 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 this mistrust with the person that was supposed to show me how to love the world. And so moving forward, I very much just held a lot of anger and hatred in my heart toward my mother. And, and as I moved forward, I found a lot of solace in my friendships and the people that, that, that were there. I was very blessed and fortunate to have a strong group of friends who always accepted me and loved me. There was a part of me that didn't accept and love myself. And so later in life, I turned to drugs and I turned to alcohol. I had a sexual dysfunction that I didn't want to talk about with anybody because I was so ashamed of it. I thought that I would never be able to have a functional sexual relationship with somebody, so I hid and I drank. And I tried so hard to then find love. And I reached and reached and reached and it would the world pushed me away further and further the more that I would seem to reach. And I spiraled into darkness for a long time. And I and again I'm so grateful to have had friends. And I didn't share this with them though. And so finally, when I was 21 years old, I, I met someone in my life. I was 24 actually. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I just was so attracted to this woman. And I, I, I took a limb and I decided I was going to reach out and I was going to try to make a connection with her. And we did. And it was wonderful. And then we went to have sex and it came back down to that again and I, and I and I had so much shame and trauma around there that I hadn't resolved that it became to be dysfunctional again. And so one day I decided while we were sitting down, I, I couldn't hold this in my heart any longer. I needed to share. 
I needed to share what had happened to me. And a beautiful thing happened when I shared that. She was there still. She held me. And so I, for the first time, realized that it was okay. And so I took a little bit of that pressure off myself. But all this anger that I had held in my heart, all of this, all of this, this blame and this, this, this hatred toward my mother, it incarnated itself into me, into believing that, that I was not lovable. And then the anger started to happen for me. And so this one person that I had found love and acceptance with, who seemed to be the person who loved me when I was missing that all my life, well, when I wasn't getting what I wanted in that relationship, my anger started to come out. And I would unconsciously use tools of manipulation to try to, try to keep that, that love there. But the more that I would try that, the further it got pushed away. Until years into our relationship, my sweetheart told me that she didn't know if she could be with me anymore. And there became this, this turning point for me in my life. Because in my past, I would always have just... I would have always just blamed and I would have just projected and said, how could you leave me? You said you love me, you don't love me and all of these, you know, and it was very much just a, you know, a projection of what I was feeling internally. So this time I decided that I would sit and I would breathe and I knew there was nowhere to run. And all of these things that I had feared had come to a head and it was sitting in front of me and looking me in the face. And I decided in that moment that I wouldn't fight anymore that I loved her more than I loved being with her. And if what she needed was freedom, then that is all I wanted for her. And that was about four years ago, and we're still together today. And very much, there's still been much more work, that, that same shadow, that same feeling, that same anger still lives in me to this day. But I'm learning to give it love myself because there came a point later in our relationship where I was given the space to be with myself and to know that, that regardless of who came in and who went out, that that would always be there. That became my foundation. It became love. And I forgave myself for seeing that I was just trying to find this. I was just trying to find the love. And so I realized that day that I could take anything in this life. I could take anything. I could really just take anything and I could turn it into love. Because no matter what someone did to me, they can't take the love that I have inside my heart from me. And that's freely given. It's not something conditional. It's just, it is just love and it just lives there. And it's for me, it's for you. It's for all of us. It is the gift that we are given in life. It's my belief. And so the rewritten story is a proclamation that no matter what story was placed on me, I'm not going to blame what happened to me for who I am. A good friend of mine once said that it isn't what happens to us in this life that matters. It is how we respond to what happens that shapes our story. And so... I've decided to shape my story, built on a foundation of love, patience, acceptance, and perseverance. So guys, thank you so much again for being here with me today. Uh, the song I'd like to share with you is a song that I wrote when I was going through that time of being with myself. It is a song called I'll Be Here. And before I play it, I would like to just invite you to take a, a long, slow breath with me. We're going to inhale now. Slowly release. A really interesting lesson I learned today was that I can be kind
to the part of myself that isn't kind to me. So without further ado, here's I'll be here. Thank you again for being here, for sharing your energy, your time, your attention with me, your love. May peace reside within your heart. Cultivate it each day and spread that to every space, every person, every life you encounter. May love be true in this world because we make it so, because we believe in one love. Thank you for coming here. Have a beautiful day. See you next week. Also, if you like what you're hearing, I'm releasing a new video every week. Press that subscribe button. You'll see it next week.